Okay, world, welcome back. 317. 317. 317. 317. That's the episode that we're on. 317 consecutive days of podcasting. And the other day was the first day that I actually recommended to somebody else to record their show, whatever that is, every single day. And while it's daunting and challenging, there's so many benefits to, to doing this every single day. And honestly, when I, when I, when I, when I turn this, when I turn the microphone on for this, for this uh, podcast, I had no intention of talking to this, but I'm going to give it to you anyway, because here's what's really important is because the, what I, what I see with, with, with recording every single day is you are able to learn what works. You're able to learn what doesn't work. You're going to learn you're going to know what people click on, what types of content works, what types of content your audience likes, what types of content spurs people to take the next step in your sales funnel. And all of that, super important, super important. But here's what's awesome about it is by doing it every single day, you dramatically speed up your timeline. Think about this. People have started podcasts. I, I've, you know, be, <laughs> I think, I think my brother does a podcast uh, every two, Twice a week, I think he does it. I think he's on episode number 85 or something. And that's awesome. Like, unbelievable consistency. He started it a long time ago. Uh, and that's unbelievable consistency. And we started, I think he started a couple months after him, after me. But I, at least in the podcast world, have been able to, I, I'm, on, I'm on episode 317. But I think about how much faster I'm going to learn things in, in, at least in that, in, from that standpoint, uh, than somebody who's going slower or more methodical through the process. Now, look, there's 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 different reasons for for different plans, no doubt. But if you're somebody who's in the entrepreneurial space, this is one of the one of this is one of the real spaces where speed literally matters. Like speed really matters as an entrepreneur. And why would you? intentionally slow yourself down to make it a more comfortable process for you. Now, if it's impractical, that's one thing. But if you're just looking for the comfort, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of out on that, right? And I think that I just think that I, the, like I, I think back to when Tony Robbins talked about how I think he joined Toastmasters to learn how he could become a better public speaker. Uh, and he did, he did like a hundred times more speeches than anybody else in a year. And he did it in like three months, right? And it's the same thing. It's like speeding it up. I learned it so quickly and I became so much better so fast. And, and like, it just makes so much sense. And as daunting as it is, I really actually do recommend that. And, and from the learning standpoint, from the data standpoint, from the speed standpoint, but at the same time, maybe more important than anything else is you find your voice. Now that's something that Russell Brunson talked about uh, when when he was first suggesting it to me, not personally through his book uh, and many of the courses that he saw, he saw, but he talks about finding your voice. And I don't know how long it took me to find my voice. Heck, I I don't even know if I have found it yet. But I'll tell you this: recording a podcast right now for me is a piece of cake. It is my daily routine, and it is just part of what I do. And if you don't put in the hours to make it part of what do you do and make it part of your routine how can you how can you ever expect to become to be able to resonate to be able to communicate people right because i think in entrepreneurship like let, let me let me let me put break this down to you from an entrepreneurial standpoint what we're really trying to do is communicate a message right like i sit here right now and i'm trying to communicate a message to you i am trying to show you that I am an authority figure in the world of first fitness business coaching, somebody who knows what they're talking about, okay? And I also want to communicate a message that I can actually help you. And I have programs that can, that can really actually do that. And I have to really think about how I can communicate to that message to you, to the person who's working out right now, to the person who's driving in their car right now, to the person who's cooking dinner right now, to the person who's going for a walk right now, to the person who's just sitting down, being a blob, not doing anything, but for some reason has this on in the background. Like the game for me is how do I actually communicate that message? And if I suck at public speaking, I'm never going to get there. I am never 
going to get there, right? So what I have to do is I have to find my voice. I would bet if I went back to my first few podcasts, first 10, 50, 100, I don't even know. But if I went back to those podcasts, there's no doubt that I would be a little awkward, a little hesitant. I remember in the beginning, like if I, I was sitting here in my little home office here, and if somebody was outside, uh, you know, making a hot pocket in the, in the microwave, and I knew that they could hear me, that made me uncomfortable, made me a little self, self-conscious about, about what I was doing. Uh, but episode 318, 317, whatever the heck we're on here, I don't care, right? But what that allows me to do is builds, builds a little resilience, builds a little skill set, allows me to find my voice, allows me to be comfortable with what I'm saying. So recording things every day is going to allow you to be a better communicator. And as an entrepreneur, that's what you are. You are a communicator. Now, I had no intention, like I said, of going on this tangent. So I'm going to stop it right here and talk about what I wanted to talk about. But I want you to understand that I think that might be really important. And as daunting and as challenging and as scary as it might be, I have a friend who's doing it. I'm going to see where he's at. Kevin Tarka, Sports Business Secrets. Kevin, if you're listening, I know he's, a, he's an avid listener to the podcast. I want to shout Kevin out. I'm going to tell you right now what number he's on. He's doing it every single day. This legend, this guy's a legend. He's on episode, he's on episode 202. Kev, I don't know when you started, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I want to go back and see. I think I think I just saw October 2020. Legend, absolute legend. October 15th, 2020 is amazing, right? And him and I are just at the point where it's just part of the day, it's part of the routine, it's part of what we do, and it works. It freaking works okay so give it a shot at least think about it okay now what i wanted to talk about today was i've been recently watching another round of the last dance the last dance the documentary about the 1998 1997 1998 chicago bulls shout out to my college basketball coach scott burrell who's just getting absolutely berated by by air jordan himself in episode seven i think uh and and also to my former colleague judd bushler uh where i worked with him as a coach for the lakers uh and he's all he was also on that team really really wild and cool and fun experience for me to be able to see two guys that i know and i know really well uh on that team and experience being part of that history um so shout, so shout out to those guys but watching this documentary and something really clicked with me yesterday. So they're doing the scene. If you've seen the documentary, they're doing the scene where he's talking about why you actually don't want to be like Mike. Uh, and he's talking about how the minute he leaves his hotel room, like the lights are on, the spotlights on, like everybody's looking at him. And people are clamoring, going nuts for Michael Jordan. And he's Michael Jordan. I mean, heck, who wouldn't go nuts for Michael Jordan, right? And He's talking about, he's like, my life now is I'm just holed up in this hotel room because I cannot leave without a huge commotion being caused. Uh, and he's talking about how difficult it is to, to be like Mike, despite the commercial, if I could be, be like Mike. I don't know this. I don't know. I was, I wonder what, I wonder how old I was when that commercial came out. I, was, I think I was pretty young, but I digress. So he's talking about, he's talking about like, I, he's honestly not giving any advice, just kind of giving a window into what he does. And he's like, I just come up here. And when I, when I finally come into my room, close the door or sit here and I just visualize what it's like, what it's going to be like when we win the championship at the end of the season. I think about what it's going to be like when, uh, you know, I'm holding the trophy and the champagne is coming down and I really visualize and I think about how amazing it is. And this is what drives me to compete. It's what drives me to be better every single day and to push myself and to push my teammates and to really get people, get his teammates and get everybody to, to be one with this mission and get them to that, to that proverbial promised land. And I'm like, damn, does that sound familiar or what? I mean, how many, how many times do I have to say it? How many times do millionaires and billionaires around the world have to say it? Your mind matters. Visualization. How many people talk about visualizing success, manifesting success? And here it is, once again, right in front of my face from a guy that I've loved my whole life, Michael Jordan. When, we, when I was working for the Lakers, we went down to Charlotte, or he's the owner of Charlotte now. And 
Judd Bushler, who I was hoping would be able to like, get, like you know, get me to introduce my in, introduce me to Mike, uh, never happened. Uh, and I remember I was pra- we were practicing in the Charlotte Hornets practice facility, and Michael Jordan's office was overlooking the uh, was overlooking the practice court. And I stayed late. I stayed way after practice to shoot around, screw around, and uh, I was just help, hoping to catch a glimpse, uh, maybe say what's up. And I don't know. I wanted to say hi, but anyway. Uh, Mike's the man and everybody admires him. And here it is again, like he's showing like the pathway to success is so simple. It's so simple. You got to be focused. You got to work hard. You got to do things that other people aren't willing to do. But I think that the focus, that visualization, that's something that is snoozed on by so many. It's something that, that I snoozed on for a while and still I have, I struggle with it. Still, I don't always want to do it. I right before this podcast, while the previous podcast was compressing and, and getting ready to record, uh, I sat in this chair and I set a timer for three minutes. Three minutes. And all I wanted to do was be like Mike. I wanted to be like Mike. I sat in this chair and I thought about what it would be like to accomplish the goal that I've currently set for myself. It's a revenue goal. Uh, and I'm gonna buy a I want to buy a car at the end of it. Uh, and I've really sat there and I really thought about what it's gonna be like. To, to do that. And it was hard. Like it was hard for three minutes. If I can't focus for three minutes, if I can't focus for three minutes, how am I going to go out there and, and be such a legend, the legend that I want to be, if I can't focus for three minutes, my brother, former major league baseball player, his, he, uh, his agent, Scott Boris hooked him up with a sports psychologist and the sports psychologist had him go through a pitching session or a bullpen session or something like that in his mind. And he was, and he, my brother was like, I, my mind's all over the place. I can't, I can't focus on that. And he's like, well, how then do you expect to focus when you're on the mound? And it's the same thing. If I can't sit for three minutes and focus on what I want and my goal, how am I going to feel that? How am I going to do that? How am I going to consistent, consistently produce every single day? And that's really where you start relying on grit. And we've talked about grit. I think it's episode 311. I just posted that on Instagram. That's how I know that. But the visualization, the mental focus, here is just another example of why that's just so wildly important. And it's coming from the goat himself, Michael Jordan. So my question to you is my question even to me as I, I sit here, I'm sitting here and I'm going to ask this question to myself actually, because that's what this podcast is all about. And I sit here and I'm looking at you through the camera, but right above me, I have a mirror and it's and honestly stare into my soul. And I'm going to say, how many times, how many times is somebody who has already reached the promised land, who has already gotten to a place that you're trying to get to, how many times will somebody there who's traveled that path, who is a veteran of that journey, how many times will they have to tell you that visualization, focus, your mindset is probably more important than anything else before you will actually commit and dedicate yourself to that process. How many times? Now, this is something that I've been working on for a long time. I even have right here in my pocket, my little goal card. For those of you watching on YouTube, I think about it. I, 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 I tap it throughout the day and try to put myself in those shoes. Okay. Something that I'm working on, but I'm not there yet. I'm not great at it. Look at a guy like Michael Jordan. He's great at it. Maybe he was born that way. Maybe it developed. I don't know. Some people are born that way. Some people aren't. For the normal person, like you and I, we probably have to manufacture that a little bit. So let's manufacture it. And the question is, how many times will somebody have to tell you? There's no doubt going to be people that listen to this podcast. They're going to hear this. It's going to go in one ear, right out the other. In their left ear pod, right out the right ear pod. And that's okay. But how many times is it going to have to happen? Is it going to be endless? Will you just give up on that at some point? Or do you really want it? So much to talk about there. So much to talk about there. Really, truly. I'll tell you this. This is what I'll leave it. This is what I'll leave you with. Every entrepreneur, every entrepreneur out there, you want to go over to 4acoaching.com just to see what our process looks like. The first thing we have on there is personal systems. If you go to 4acoaching.com and you can see, I, probably when this comes out, it's probably going to still be in, uh, still be a work in progress. But if you go over there, you're going to see, we, put, we just put up a picture last night of our journey, of the process that we take people through uh, in our 4A coaching program. And the number one thing, literally the first thing on there is personal systems. And personal systems is 
What do we need to do to make you a legendary entrepreneur? What do we need to do to make you an assassin? What are those things that need to happen in order to, in order to create consistency, productivity, revenue? What do we need to do to make you great? And once you're great, that's the foundation and we can build off of that. But it's got to be the first thing that we all do. So if you're an entrepreneur and you haven't really valued that yet, if you haven't really committed to eating well, exercising, mastering your mind, and all of those things, well, are you really an entrepreneur yet? Or is your, are you just built on a shaky foundation? Lots of food for thought here today, guys. Thanks so much for being here. If this made you think, if this made you wonder, if this made you ch- make some changes in life, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, we genuinely appreciate it. Guys, have a wonderful day. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for the next episode of the Sean Light Podcast. Have a good one.